Hello, Joe Willis here. It's been a bit. This video is going to be my top 10 favorite Batman movies. You can obviously tell here because of my uh, Batman Media series. Blu ray said this is going to be Batman related. Tid? Related. Related in my best situation. Ah. Signed by Kevin Conroy before his untimely passing. So yeah, I decided why not talk about bad movies, especially since we got g things in the horizon, such as that Brave and the Bull Band film going to be coming out, Force in the Bad Family, that the Batman Part Two, and the two Batmans in the Flash film. So yeah, so about my top ten favorite Batman films of all time, I'll go ten to one. And here we go, number ten, The Dark Knight Returns. The Dark Knight Returns, I can, turns is a pretty two parts, a pretty faithful adaptation of the comic book storyline. It has a really decent animation style. It has some great voice casting with from Peter Weller as Batman, Mike Emerson as the Joker. It has a great atmosphere to it. To it, and plus, what other movies do you see where Batman and Green Arrow get to team up? Not many. And it has a fantastic score to it as well. In case you know what the plot is, it focuses on a 50 something year old Batman coming out of retirement to fight crime one last time, basically. And also, also, that Batman is like super ripped in it, like he's super buff. So, yeah, he's a big, beefy Batman. Fear Dead Returns is definitely one I recommend for all the ages. Number 9, Son of Batman. Son of Batman's an interesting film. For one thing, it does introduces Bad, uh, man's, introduces Batman's son, Damian Wayne, who's his illegitimate son, and the mother being Talia al Ghul. I'm not going to say how they have the kid because it's a little bit inappropriate the way it's, way it's described. But yeah, the film is a decent job of... Exploring Batman and Son's relationship, it has Deathstroke as the villain, which is great because Deathstroke is my favorite, one of my favorite comic book villains of all time. And it has great voice acting, great animation, and great score, and it has a fantastic chemistry between Batman and Damien. And that's all I have to say about Son of Batman. Number 8. Batman Begins. Then Begins to me is for the film that really got me invested as a kid. When I watched Watch Batman Begins, it was like seeing Batman in a whole new life for me. I mean, I was really more familiar with this Batman, but seeing Batman Begins was like a breath of fresh air for me. Because that means it got me because it had a great, interesting origin for Batman. With man, and it had some great visuals to it, it had some great a lot of great action scenes. And to be honest, it made you super root for the character and there and pretty much did a good job of fleshing him out as a four-dimensional character. They're coping in a harsh world and doing whatever he has to to protect it from the evil. And it, was not, it wasn't anything I've seen when I was a kid. I think I watched this film way before I saw Batman 89 or Mask the Phantasm, which was coming up on the list. The Batman Begins was a really fascinating film for me, and I think it's a film that should be studied to as well, much as The Dark Knight, so, like, when it comes to how to do a story, at least a four-act structure in my eyes. To me, Batman Begins is one-third of a great, masterful trilogy. It also has my favorite Jim Gordon in it. In it. Gary Oldman, to me, is the best, go best James Gordon in all of Batman in my eyes. Heck, I even see he's even better than the one here. One moment. Okay, now to go to number seven. Batman the Long Halloween. I'm, I know this and Dark Return of Tank are two parts, but I combine them to one part, made simpler. It's a good Batman film. It has some great design. It has probably one of the more interesting relationships between Batman and Catwoman I've seen for a long time. 
My favorite relationship is still the Dark Knight Rises, which I'll get to in a little bit. But it just has some, uh, has a good story. It's very faithful to the original comic. Dick. Actually, one funny thing. I thought that, um, uh, Mark Hamill was going to be in the, f that because the Joker selling Mark Hamill, but it turned out it was Troy Baker who voiced Joker in Arkham Origins and a couple of other things. Things and I explain a lot because he, like I said, he voiced Joker in Arkham Origin, so that's why the voice sounds familiar. Because he did a really good Mark Hamill impression. And he also did a decent job on building up the origin of Two Face and bringing in a bunch of other Batman villains into the mix. It's a pretty good movie. I would recommend it. It's about Batman tracking down these criminal events that take place on the holidays. Some of it being rigged up by this villain called Calendar Man, who does his criminal things based on holidays, kind of. Yeah. Number six, Batman '89. Where to begin with that film? It's a great film. And everything you want a Batman film, it's got entertaining action, fun characters, there's decent story like. Story like Michael Keaton, I know everyone's gonna say he's the best Batman. To me, it'll always be this guy though. This guy here, the one who signed my Blu-ray set before his untimely passing. To me, he'll always be the Batman. Just my opinion. And the '89 film has a good soundtrack by Danny Elfman. Jack Nicholson's wonderful as the Joker. And the costume design is good, and I love Keen's bat suit. I love a lot of the lines in the film. Film, you have a dance by the devil in pale moonlight. This town needs an enema. <laughs> he's at home, washing his tights. <laughs> and yeah, Barry, yeah, Tim Burton did a pretty interesting take in the film. So yeah, Barry Nine, great film. In case you wonder why this portion of the video looks different, it's because I kind of record this on a different day. So, I apologize for that, just things tend to kind of get in the way a lot, but I'm doing my best here, so please cope with me. Me. Go with me. Uh, next on the list is... The Dark Knight. If you can't the number one, because while it's a good film, I would consider it to be my favorite Batman film of all time. I mean, it is good. I like... Heath Ledger, which is good, Joker, Bale's good, Gary Oldman's excellent, I love Gary Oldman in all three Dark Knight films, he's my favorite Commissioner Gordon. Um, uh, let's see, what else is good about it? The f action scenes are fantastic, fantastic, I have, have a soft spot for practical effects in modern cinema. Used properly, and let's see what else there is in that film I like. Um, and I will say they handled Two Face pretty well in the film. They handled Two Face pretty well. Oh yeah, so but yeah, it's not just because. Wait, not, not number six. is it number six. Number five on the list because I still have some some ones I like more. Here's my top f four now, the ones I love the most. Number four, Under the Red Hood, which is one of the best adaptations of a Batman story, in my opinion, and should have been released in theaters, not directed video, in theaters. It's, it's, it was that good, it should have been in theaters. In case you don't know the plot of the film, film Batman is investigating the Red Hood, who turns out, spoiler alert, to be his thought to be deceased partner, the sidekick, Jason Todd Robin, who is now, uh, who is now, uh, who is now a crime lord called the Red Hood, who wants to get, get revenge on Ben Joker for his death, because the Joker is the one who killed him. Yeah, I thought, to me, it was one of the most emotional and most impactful Batman stories I've ever seen in my life. Great voice acting from Jensen Ackles and John DiMaggio and Bruce Greenwood. 
all did fantastic in the film. Definitely a film that should be released in theaters. Not direct to video. In theaters. Just had great animation, great action, a, a fantastic story that no other Batman film can beat. In my eyes. Well, actually, the next three can beat it, which I'll get to. Uh, number three on the list is the recent The Batman. Matt Reeves' Batman. That film I actually enjoyed. The best way to describe that film is competent. Had to, the performances were great. None of the actors were sleepwalking. All of them were putting their effort into it. Robin Hassan saw his Batman. Zoe Kravitz was, looked definitely looked the part of Catwoman. She definitely looked the part, part, especially with the short black hair, which is what the current version of Catwoman looks like in the comics. She has short black hair currently, so nailed it there, nailed it. Um, uh, Eddie Circus was surprisingly decent, Alfred. Although my favorite outfit is um, uh, Sean Pertwee from Gotham. Uh, um, but Nancy Circus wasn't bad. I uh, forgot the guy who played Gordon, but he was decent, but not as good as Gary Oldman in my eyes. Let's see who else film. Paul Dino's Riddler was an interesting interpretation. Kind of this like jigsaw like guy. Guy with rail or with rails and stuff wearing this mask or whatever. It was pretty decent new change. I'm uh Colin Farrell was also pretty good at as the penguin. I when like that makeup did a great job of hiding him and he really blended into that role great. And who's Oh yeah, John Turturro was fantastic as Salvatore Moroni. Not to me, I mean Carmine Falcone. I got mixed up. Carmine Falcone. Honestly, I felt like it was one of his better roles to date, and at least it was dignified. It wasn't like in the Transformers films, you get crap like Bumblebee pissing on him and stuff. At least it gave him something dignified, which I appreciate. And fine. No, Lee. No, he's you after the film. Oh, yeah. I love the design of Gotham in the film. It definitely felt like a crime filled city. It felt grungy. It felt like a crime filled city that I can definitely buy was crime filled. And let's see what else it had that I enjoyed in the film. Um, uh, okay, the three. It didn't even be three hours, I admit. Three hours is a little long, but aside from that, the, the costume design was good, the production design was good. I definitely felt like Matt Reeves was very passionate about this film and wanted to make it as good as he could. And I will say he succeeded. I had enjoyed the film. It's a pretty dark, gritty take on Batman that still, at the same time, differentiates from the Nolan films. And still remains his own thing. So I appreciate that. Number two on the list is Batman Mask of the Phantasm, which should be in this Blu-ray set. He said, um, uh, which, right here next to Barry Mr. Freeze Sub-Zero. Ooh. One thing I will say, one thing I like about the film is it's, it's an easy film to get through. It's only like an hour and, uh, hour and 20 minutes. It's a quick film to get through. I always get that film in like a simple afternoon usually. Every time I watch the film, it's only like a simple afternoon and I'm through the film. No, film. And, um, uh, of course, it's been in a series, the animation is fantastic, especially in HD. Like, you gotta watch the show in HD for the full experience. If you don't watch in HD, you're missing out. Like, HD is the only way to watch anything from the DCAU. You. Because it looks fantastic in 10 transfer. Um, uh, you can know the film, the band of this game, this crim, this... Assassin called the Phantasm who's killing off gangsters as well as piecing together through the pieces uh, together his old love life life while flashbacking about how he became Batman kind of. It was a pretty decent take on how he became Batman. It had a lot of cool visuals to it. Um, uh, Mark Hamill of course is great the Joker in this with Kevin Conroy's Batman. And yeah and let's see the story's intriguing and engaging. It was a childhood class for me. Like, I remember when I was a kid, I first found the tape for the film at my Uncle Rod's house, and I 
since I was really a fan of this beautiful show, of course I took the tape home and I watched it, and I fell in love with the film immediately, and there was a pretty cool film, pretty cool experience as a kid. Yeah. And I'm glad this one at least got released theatrically, even though I kind of didn't do all the box office, but I'm glad I got a theatrical run, at least. And number one on the list. Don't hate me for number one on the list. Number one is The Dark Knight Rises. Feel free to be mad at me, but I like The Dark Knight Rises. I'm sorry, I think it's my favorite Batman film. I thought it was a great end to the Nolan trilogy. I love Tom Hardy's Bane, and I thought it might be my favorite Catwoman. Always oh, one of my other two favorites. I, I like Zoe Kravitz. I did like Cameron by Condova and Gotham. And I and I lo lo love the the dramatic storyline. I loved. I thought it was a great in conclusion. The trilogy very strong, very powerful. Had some great fight scenes in the film, like the fight scene between Batman and Bane the sewer was so emotional in my eyes. I loved it. And a lot of Bane's lines might be a lot more quotable than Joker's lines. Crouching this play with no survivors. I'm Gotham's Reckoning. I know a lot of people like to make fun of his voice, but I don't care. I still enjoy his performance. And I... And... Bale went on a high note with this one, like, he went out great with this film. So, I praise his performance in this film, and, um, uh, I did, let's see what else is great about the film. Well, film, and I still love the, the practical effects in the film, and I love, love the arc Batman goes through about, Putting himself back together, a broken man rebuilding himself, basically. For a final fight. It's pretty interesting and cool. And, yeah, that's my list. I'm going to do some more professional videos soon, but anyway, until then, hope you like this video, and uh, keep cool.